Hi, my name's Andy and this is the last episode of my first Raspberry Pi game in which we finish off our game. Uh, we've been writing a game which uh, shows you uh, either a red square, in which case you should press absolutely nothing at all, or a green circle, in which case uh, you should quickly try and press a button. Um, and previously you've only uh, been allowed to have one go, so it's not, it doesn't really feel like a game, it's just a little thing. I mean, it's not going to feel that much like a game anyway, but um, hopefully just enough to get you started. Um, uh, this time we're going to do it ten times and then give you your score at the end. So simple as that. Um, check out the blog post, um, which uh, gives you all the instructions I'm going to give you here, um, and also gives you a link to um, my version of the finished program, so you can compare yours against mine. Um, let's jump over to the Raspberry Pi. Um, so the first thing to do is a tiny little thing that we're going to need. Um, because we're going to be running this loads of times, there's something missing from the ready screen function that we're going to need. So um, just at the beginning of the ready screen function, we just need to blank out the screen because we're going to come into this several times by the end of today uh, instead of just only only coming into it once. If we came into it once, um, the screen's already black when you start Pi game, but. Uh, because we're going to go in there several times, um, we need to blank out the screen uh, just before we write the word ready. So um, probably should have done that in the first place, but anyway, I've done it now. Um, oops, I didn't mean to save as. Oops, everything's jumping around. I just meant to save. Uh, so that's the tiny little thing that I've realised we're going to need. I wouldn't have done it in that order had I not already done this. So let's go right down to the bottom. And remember what, how our program works at the moment. So at the moment what it does is, whoops. Something going on with my master. Um, you start the program, which just set, does some setting up. Shows the screen that says, are you ready? It waits for a random amount of time. Shows you a shape on the screen and checks whether or not you pressed. And then finishes. So that only does it once. And the bit that we want to do more than once is this bit that I'm highlighting here. Ready, screen, weight and shape. So, first thing I'm going to do is write a little comment in here. Just so that <coughs> so that I remember this is the beginning and that all the stuff above here is functions that we're going to call. <coughs> this is kind of the main program. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a loop. And the type of loop we're going to make is called a for loop. So we write for, which means this is a for loop, and a for loop is just a loop which goes through a list of things. So the list of things we're going to have is, is going to be created by this function called range. And we're passing in the number 10. So what range does is it makes a list of numbers um, in a range up to 10. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail about exactly which numbers it is, because you would have thought it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 10, but actually it's 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9. Um, but I'm jumping ahead there. Anyway, what we do, when we make a for loop is we take 4, we give the name of a variable, and this variable is going to get a different number in it every time for everything in the list. It's going to it's going to change every time we go through the code. And then we say in, and then we give the list that we want to go through. Then everything that we want to do more than once we put inside the loop. So what that means is we indent it. If I scroll down, so look, end is not indented. So end will only happen once after this loop is finished. But everything that I've indented is going to happen 10 times. And when it happens, i is going to be a different number each time. It will start off at 0, and it will go all the way through until it, you run all this code again, when i is 9, and then it will finish. And this for loop can be used for any list of things, but the list we're using is the list 0, 1, 2, up to 9, uh, which is what is given back by this range function. You may be wondering why, uh, when you ask for 10 numbers, you get 0 to 9 instead of 1 to 10. Um, it's fairly common in a lot of programming languages. Uh, it feels really natural and right to me, uh, but I appreciate it. it probably feels a little bit wrong and weird to you, uh, if this is the first time you've encountered it. Um, just go with it. Um, don't forget it or you'll get really confused, but just go with it for now. Okay, so at this stage, um, we could try it and we would find that we get to play the game 10 times. Um, and that's it, you just get, you see 10 shapes and nothing else has changed. 
So I won't do that. Uh, I'm trying to make this one take a little bit less long than the last video I made. Um, so what we'll do immediately is we'll give you a, we'll try and work out how to give you a score at the end. So the score is going to be one point every time you get it right, and no points if you get it wrong. So when do we know whether or not you got it right? Well, let's have a look up at green shape. So this is the green shape function, which shows a green shape to the person. All this stuff shows the shape. It says press something, and then you wait until they press something or didn't press something. And then when we get to here, here's where we know whether or not you succeeded. Either we call green success or green failure. So what I want to do is make green shape give back an answer saying how many points you got for doing this. So if we succeeded, we're going to show the success screen, and then we are going to send back one point. And the way we do that is we type return one. If you failed, we're going to give you zero points. So I'm going to return zero. So what we're doing is making green shape change so that it gives back an answer. And we need to do the same thing for red shape, but they're in the opposite order, so be careful. If you pressed on red, that's bad. So we're going to return zero points if you pressed, and one point if you succeeded by not pressing. So now red shape also returns an answer, giving you either one point or no points. So where do green shape and red shape get called from? Well, they get called from shape, which is the, the one that gets called right at the bottom. So, um, an answer is coming back from either green shape or red shape, and we just need shape to give back that answer to the person that called in. So, and it. So, it's really simple what we do here. We just put return. What that means is take the answer that came back from green shape and just make it the answer that comes back from shape. Simple as that. So, where does shape get called? Where are we going to get this answer back? Where are we going to get the answer back is here. So now shape is giving us back an answer. What we're going to have to do is collect all those answers, add them up, and then print them out at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable. I'm going to call it correct, which is the number of correct answers you've got. I'm just calling it correct. And at the beginning, before we go into the loop, correct is going to be zero. You haven't got any answers correct yet. And then when uh, when we call shape, we get back some points to add on to correct. So what I'm going to do is, that shape is going to give us back either 0 or 1. I'm going to use plus equals, which means make correct increase by the amount of the number on the right-hand side. The number on the right-hand side is going to be coming back from shape. It's either going to be 0 or 1. So correct will either have 1 added to it or 0 added to it. And if we go through this loop 10 times, every time you get one right, correct will go up by 1. If you get it wrong, it won't. So by the end of this loop, the, uh, the variable correct will have the number of times you got it right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass the answer on to the end, whoops, to the end function. Uh, and the end is going to print it out for us. Okay, so let's go and find end. We're going to make it print it out in two different ways just to, to help us. So firstly, we're going to write it to the console. So we're using the print command, which writes things to the console. You remember we did that when we wrote our Hello World program in uh, lesson two, um, video two. Um, so here we're using the print statement. We're giving it a string, but we're not just giving it a string. We're giving it a string that we want to process in some way. So before it goes to print, it gets processed. So what happens is uh, a really nice thing you can do in Python uh, is you can write a piece of text, and at any point in that text you can put this percent %d, and then you use the percent operator, so the string goes in as the left-hand thing, and then you put percent, and then the right-hand thing is some uh, value, in this case a number. Um, so when it's a number, you put percent %d, and percent means take this thing you've got on the right and substitute it in to the string that you've got on the left. And if you put percent %d, that means it's going to be a number. You could also use a percent %s, which means you're going to substitute one string into another one, which could be useful if you wanted to say, hello, Andy, instead of hello, world. Um, and you've got the name Andy from somewhere else. You might want to <coughs> substitute a string into a string. In this case, we just want to put in a number. Excuse my coughing. <coughs> um, so we do percent %d, 
and then we substitute the, um, cor the answer correct into here. Now we haven't actually been given correct yet because I've missed that bit. So you notice when we called end, we're now passing in an argument, but I haven't put that in here. So let's put it in now. So now end accepts this argument, which we're already passing to it. And we can use this argument value to substitute the answer into this print statement. And then it's going to print out you got three correct answers, or however many you got. Now the next thing to do is we're going to make another string to write on the screen. We're going to call it message. We're going to make a variable with it in. And this is what we're going to write on the screen. So again, we're using a percent %d, just like above, to substitute the answer in. Then we're going to say press a key to exit, just like we did before. And we're going to substitute in correct. So we're doing exactly the same thing as before. We've got a string. We use the percent operator. An operator is a thing like plus or minus. It's just something goes in between two things. So we use the percent operator. It takes in a string on the left. It always takes a string on the left. And it takes this number on the right. And the number gets put in there. So all we're doing is this message that we've created, we're now going to substitute in. I mean, we're now going to put in to the right text command. Instead of that, having that string written directly in there, we're making the string on the line before and then passing it into right text. That's just because it doesn't fit, really. No, no other reason for that. OK, so now we've changed end. Uh, uh, that's the last thing we need to do to be able to print out a score at the end. So let's try that out quickly. So let's run our program the usual way, going back to LX terminal, type red green dot, dot slash red green dot pi, run. I'm going to have 10 goes, so I'll go as quickly as I can. So I'll get them all, I'll press on everything just to make it go quicker. So red is wrong, so zero points. Got it wrong again, still zero points. Got it wrong again, still zero points. We've had three goes so far. Got it right, we've got one point. Got it right again, got two points. Got it wrong. Got it right. That's three points. Four points. Still four points. Still four points. And look what it says. It says, thanks for playing. Score four. Press the key to exit. And look, you got four correct answers. Go us. And we can press the key or click to exit. We can see it printed out there. So that all worked brilliantly. Well done us. OK, so the other thing we'd like to do is we'd like to know the score part way through uh, the game. And we'd like to know how many goes we've had so far, because it's quite hard to keep track, wasn't it? So let's find the ready screen function, because we want that's where we're going to write on um, what go we're on and what our score is at the moment. So what we want is someone is going to pass in these arguments to us. Go number and correct, which is what we're calling the number of correct answers you've got so far, or your score. So someone's going to pass these in to us. We're not sure who yet, but we can ignore that for now. We know we want to write those things on the screen. Previously we just wrote ready. Now we're going to say this. Instead of just saying ready in the middle, we're going to say what turn we're on, and what score we've got. And, we, and again, we're substituting things into strings, just like we did before, but this time there are two of them. So we're using percent. And then um, instead of just having a number on the right, we've got two things to substitute in. So what we can do is we can provide a list. And so long as the list has got two things in, and there are two things needing to be substituted, that will work fine. It will substitute them in, in order. So the two things we're going to substitute in are going to be go number and correct, right? Well, wrong. So let me just explain. Oops. So we're going to, we want to write turn, which is go number, and score, which is going to be this correct thing. So it all looks right. The difference is, you remember I was saying, when we do a for loop, we start from zero and go up to nine. Well, that's all very well for us, but when we're showing the person playing the game, they don't want to know they're on go number zero. They want, they want to call that go number one, and they don't want to think that they're on go number nine when actually they're on their last one. So what we do is we do a plus one to this number, because the, no the number that's going to get passed in is going to be a zero for the first one. We want it to be a one for the first one. So we just add one, put all that in brackets to make it easier to understand. And then there's another set of brackets around, which means this is a list. If we don't put these brackets here, this is an example of when it doesn't know it's going to, it's going to be a list. 
So we have to put the brackets to make sure it knows to group these things together and treat them as a list. Anyway, we substitute in what turn you're on, which is go number plus one, and your current score, which is just correct. Um, so now we've got a string, which is the thing we want to write on the screen. We haven't written it yet, so let's write it. So we're going to write it on the screen. What we're going to write is the thing we've just made, and what color we're going to write it is white and we're passing in false because this is a small writing not the big writing okay so now we've written that on the screen um, but where are we calling ready screen from because we're not yet passing in the right numbers well let's go find it we're calling ready screen right at the bottom uh, down here, and what we're going to pass into ready screen is i and correct. So you know what correct is. Correct is the number of correct answers so far. i, you will remember, is this variable here that we defined, um, which gets a different number from this list every time. So the list goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 9. The first time we run this code, i is 0. The second time we run this code, i is 1, and so on. So the first time we call ready screen, we're going to pass in a zero, the next time one, and so on, which is why we're adding one to it, to make it look like a more human readable answer um, inside ready screen. Maybe I should have added one here, but I didn't. Okay, so what else was I going to do? Okay, and I reckon if I've done everything right, we have basically finished. Let's try it out one more time. It's a bit boring going through ten goes, but we'll see if we can manage it. Um... In fact, we might skip it. So look, turn number one. Oh, did you miss that? Let's do it. Let's do the next one. Turn number two, score zero. Whoops. When we press something, we say we're now on turn number three and we got a score of one. Press something again, turn number four and a score of two. And again, our score's going up. It's telling us what turn we're on. We pressed. We pressed so our score didn't go up. We're on turn number seven. Let's go all the way to the end now, shall we? Turn number nine, still score of three, and again, when we find the final score, it's going to be three, and we print that out to the end. So you see, we've basically finished. Well done. So now we have an actual game where you can uh, uh, try out your skill against the computer and find out your score at the end. The only other thing we need to do to get this completely finished, we may as well do it, is to do something that most games do, which is to fill up the whole screen instead of being in a little window like that. Sometimes I hate this, sometimes I like it, but let's just show you how. What we do is just this. We go to the start function here, and in the bit where we're setting up our screen, saying what screen mode we are, we set the size, but then if we put a comma and type in pygame.fullscreen, uh, that means use the whole screen instead of just opening in a window. So, let's run our program one more time and try that out. And this is, this is the case where, well, let's run it. This is the case where we really need the escape key to work to exit because you can't close the window anymore. So here we are filling up the whole screen. Uh, interestingly, it's not stretched to actually fill up the whole screen, which it does on my main computer. I don't know why on the Pi it's acting differently. Anyway, we filled the whole screen, but if we want to exit, we can't, there's nothing for us to close in the top right. So instead of that, let's press escape. And it works, and well done. Um, you, we have finished our game. We've got something that potentially could be fun to play. Um, you can compare your version against mine by going to the blog post, which is linked in the, the show notes on the, uh, on the YouTube video. Uh, you go down to the bottom here and click on redgreen.py and you can compare what you've typed with what I've typed. Um, I also tell you on there that I've actually slightly extended this game um, for my own fun. I played it with some of my friends, and to make it a bit more fun for grown-ups, because it's more of a kids' game or even just too boring for kids. But anyway, um, to make it a bit more fun, uh, I made it uh, test your reaction speed and give you a score based on how quickly you pressed on green, rather than just whether or not you pressed. Um, if you'd like to have a look at that, follow this link on the blog here that says Red Green on GitHub. You can uh, download the code from there. Let's have a look at that, actually, shall we? I'll just show you what you can download. So if you if you cop, if you click on the file redgreen.py here, 
Um, you can actually download this file by clicking on raw or something like that. Um, you can also see just a little bit of notes that I wrote about it. Um, if you'd like to uh, uh, make this game even better, uh, feel free to branch it on GitHub and make a pull request. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, at some point in the future, I might even do a YouTube series about how to make this game work by lighting up lights and letting you press buttons on a real physical thing instead of just on your computer. I'm looking at whether I can do a series about electronics that might be quite fun. Uh, other things you should look at, look at um, uh, the main page of my blog and you'll find some links to some other stuff about me. There's an RSS feed for the blog, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, you can go to my YouTube page and subscribe. Um, here's the Twitter page, mostly links to blog posts, occasionally I dally into a little bit of frivolity. Uh, here's my YouTube page, maybe you've seen this already. Um, you can see my feed, you can see the playlist which have got the whole Raspberry Pi game thing and, my, and the other series that I've made. Um, you can subscribe on there. Uh, what else to say? Thank you very much for uh, watching the series. Very well done if you've made it to the end of the series. Um, and uh, do send me comments, do subscribe and hopefully there'll be other series on um, different topics. Some of those topics are going to be I hope uh, really highly technical, not for beginners, but you know, really hard stuff. Um, but I've really enjoyed doing um, something that's aimed at people who are just getting started. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll do some more series on that. Um, do let me know if you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks a lot for listening.